What's up? What's happening? Peace, power, and love to everybody out there, man. It's your one and only Kansu Sheshmu Amun. And oh yes, oh yes. We here. I'm here to spit and talk shit. And I got a guest. Really not a guest, man. It's a brother who goes without no no introduction, really, man. Yeah, he's saying Gozi, a.k.a. Or Amir Kam Jackson or Amir Kamara, aka Gacy and Gozi. What happening, bro? What's up? What's good with you, man? What I am, what I am, bro? What's good? <clears throat> peace and love to the family, man. Who Jackson there? Peace and love to the family. Yo, what's good, brother? King Osiris on the horizon. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's definitely on the motherfucking horizon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, man. Yeah, you know we we've been what's chilling. Going? You know, well, it's some shit. It's a lot of shit going on. Let's just call it that. Uh -huh. It's a whole Peace, oh, Trez. lot of shit. What up, Trez? Uh -huh. Timo Sars is on the horizon. That's what brother am? Trez joining. What's, What's up, then, bro? What's it's up, a, brother? It's Trez. just a Peace lot of love. bullshit in the game. So I figure, man, let's talk about it, man. We got Kanye. We got motherfuckers that want to be Indians. We got motherfuckers that's, you know, uh, arguing over social status oh, and even, don't even know our status. So I want to address some things, man. I wanted to pick your brain, brother, you know, because you eloquently okay, explained okay. some things. Let's let's tackle the immediate issue, which is Kanye West, man. Let's tackle that. You know, Kanye mm -hmm. West said, hey, and a lot of people, I don't think, really have comprehension skills. But I'm going to wait, let you elaborate on brother Kanye West when he stated that. 400 years was a choice of sl when it comes to slavery. I don't know if people actually watched the full interview, I, but what's your opinion, bro? What's your opinion on that shit? I think that I think that with Kanye, uh, I think it's truth, and it's 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 true. Yet and still, it's it's not an easy truth. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not an easy truth because. It's true because you could, you do have the choice to not do what the fuck you don't want to do. So a lot of our ancestors could have chose to not do it and um, committed suicide like some of our ancestors did. And if that would have happened collectively, we wouldn't be here. So none of us would be here if they all committed suicide like fuck it. I mean, this is what happened as an example. This is what happened with a lot of Native Americans. A lot of them wasn't going for that shit, so they started committing suicide. And this is why you really don't find a large portion of paternal lineages of Native American men out here. You might find a lot of mighty conjure DNA from Native American women um, in the Hispanic population. A lot of them have a large portion of mighty conjure DNA um, from Native American women. And, uh, you know, the second is, is, is Sub-Saharan African, you know, because they, you know, brought a few African Africans here and Europeans who immigrated over here later. But a larger portion of Hispanics have mighty conjure DNA from Native American women. A lot of the paternal lineages don't exist, and it's for two reasons. First is that they were annihil annihilated, and they fought like hell. The second is because they a lot of them committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And I could say three, three, three reasons. Third reason is because um, Native Americans wasn't, it, America, the Americas wasn't overly, overly populated as humans think, or as people think today. You know, the Natives lived in dispersed areas. They was in pockets. You know, in some places it was more advanced than others technically. So when you look at the overall population, you know, it wasn't overly populated. Like like people think if you really study the history of the migratory route of humans. So, if it, so, so when it comes to us, if we chose not to go through what we went through and all of us, you know, you know went against it or resented against it, you know, we, we wouldn't exist. So, you know, yes, you know, it, it's a choice. And it's also a choice now because if you don't want to be in this corporation called America, you can get your passport and get the fuck up out of here. You can even give up your um your citizenship and get the fuck up out of here. You choose to stay here. Right. You know, we have immigrated and we have been here so long. We fought in every war. We participate in everything that goes on in America. I feel that the black American or African American have a right to be called American. Because if it wasn't for your blood and your backbone, America wouldn't have its structure. Mm. It wouldn't even be here. It's the African American that give America soul. You find mm -hmm. your flavors in all foods. You find your music or your drum in behind all music. I don't give a fuck if it's even genre or Europe, you, you know European um, opera shit. You find African tenets at the core of it. You feel me? 
whatever, whatever genre that, that, that goes on, as, as I should say, when it comes to, you know, whatever form of music. So you, you, you have, it, this is a hybrid cultural society. So you do have the choice to be or not to be, as they say. You know, if you want to be, you know, mm-hmm. you can choose to be. But if you don't want to be, you don't have to choose to be. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's not an easy truth for what he said. I don't think, um, first of all, I believe that my brother Kanye West, or the brother Kanye West, is, 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 is highly medicated. The man is not completely ill overall. I mean, his lifestyle, he's dealing with a lot of uh, things that he's trying to figure out himself. I mean, no matter how old you are, this man is trying to figure out things. He's confused. He takes a lot of medication. He admitted that he was on opioids. If you look at his eyes, you know, look at him. He, 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 you know, you can find to see the, the medicated glare in his eyes. He's clearly not there. Cognitively, he's not there. He's dealing with cognitive dissonance. If you listen to a lot of things he say, if you study him, he always bring up some form of slavery. His music talks about slavery. He had one, one thing when he was freestyling, talking about Amistad. You know, this man is dealing with some shit. He's, he's dealing with himself. I think he's battling between his mother's death, you know, the, 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 the overly flow of a, a large portion of money that he gained from what he used to be. Um, the things that he used to talk about, and he can't really talk about it no more because he's dealing with this, this Armenian hybrid bitch that he's laying next to. You know, he got all those things next to him, and he reproduced with her and gave her children. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, you know, he's battling with it. This is, this is a, a t- internal battle that we see that's going on with this dude. Mm-hmm. This, this is not a healthy guy, mentally. You know what I'm saying? So, I wouldn't be, you know, I, I posted stuff about what he said, and I felt it, was, it wasn't right. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, you know, I, I can't judge him. This dude is dealing with a lot of bullshit, you know, you know and all of us are. All of us are. No African-American just walking around here is completely sane. You mm-hmm. can't be. You know, you walk around here looking Nigerian, but you speak English. And then if you, when you try to speak English, goddamn it, you try to speak in the proper way, as if speaking properly the way his etiquette or his form of your uh, of English is, which is sloppy English. American English is not real English. But yet still, you feel that if you speak and act and, and function like him, you know, you're better than other people. Mm-hmm. You got to be out your goddamn mind. You got a large portion of sub-Saharan African genes flowing through your body, Yet and still cognitively, you want to function like uh, a, a British man with style, with some style from your African background. Yet and still, you want to objectify yourself as, 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 as I hate to say it, it's all Eurocentrism with an African spin behind it. Mm-hmm. Even in our urban communities, even in your form of Ebonic. Yes, you, you speak Ebonic in your own dialect or your, your own form of vernacular of English, yet and still, the sloppy English is still English. You feel me? It's still him overall. So I think all of us. Is, is, is insane and we all trying to battle with ourselves and make sense out of existence I mean the situation happened it happened could we change it and if a lot of our ancestors did commit suicide or if a lot of our ancestors did fight like Nat Turner did it change the situation it didn't change the situation mm-hmm. it never the situation was still the same what the fuck was the point if you get taken away from your home and you get stripped away from your identity and you don't know what the fuck going on. You, if some ancestors didn't even have a relationship with their mothers and fathers. A lot of them thought the situation that they were in was good. And they didn't want no other situation but that situation. Mm-hmm. They thought it was okay. Mm-hmm. Their grandfathers felt that it was wrong because their grandfathers and grandmothers knew that they were taken away from somewhere else. But when these people was killed and they left their babies behind, they babies had babies. You know, they silenced them. They took their identity away. They took their mind away. They took their tongue away. So a lot of them thought that being black or being in the city, well, being who they are was just the way life was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So their choices was really limited. What right. choices do they have? When your choices and decisions that you make is driven by his pattern, he knows what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. This motherfucker monitor, he monitors you the same way he's doing today. So, mm-hmm. you know, they, they know how people function. And the it's funny. The mind is a motherfucker. Yeah, it's funny how we are quick to address our own people, but we never address the oppressor head on. Like, you know, he made, you know, Kanye said some things about Donald Trump. He said, man, Trump has been a fixture in hip hop for the last 20 years. Actually, using the term Trump was a status symbol of success prior to him becoming the president. And now that he comes to become the president, now he's this racist so-and-so. Well, he's always been racist. What white person is not racist in America? What are we talking yeah. about here? Um, what do you feel about the psychological effects of that, man? Because it's crazy 
how we singling out this, you know, Kanye West, but just speaking in opinion. This ain't this ain't this ain't a brother that set out to be the next Farrakhan or the next Malcolm X. This is this is an entertainer. Like we put so much value, us being black people in Northern America, we put so much value into things like entertainment and sports and shit like that. It, it, but do you find that frivolous, man? What's your opinion on that? I mean, I mean, the media gives us this stuff and presents this stuff to us. I mean, most people in, in America, it's, it's cheap. You know, they want you to focus on the black and white status and uh, the things that Kanye West said. Ooh, it's just so scary. And uh, <laughs> take you back in the mindset of slavery and make white people argue with the blacks. And this is all mind control. It's exactly. a lot of real shit that's going on in society that supersedes what Donald Trump is. Donald Trump, even even Donald Trump's an entertainer. He's been in entertainment for years. He's a billionaire. He got a lot of his money from his father's wealth. This guy's an entertainer. The presidency, they, that whole thing is entertainment. Politics is entertaining. Politics, they train you to lie. They train you to lie, and these people really don't have a genuine care about people. They, they, the whole thing is to lie and be persuasive and to manipulate people. they all pirates and steal in the background. And Donald Trump is just the face of, 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 of whatever's going on. He's a fucking entertainer. It's all entertainment. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, of course Donald Trump is, is racist. But yet, still, these people be racist, but they, I don't even know, I, I mean, the complexity of, to racism is so different now. It's bigger than black and white. You know, you have uh, so-called black billionaires that's affiliated with these so-called white people and married into their bloodlines. And they're just as guilty by association in a pure pure standout racist KKK member that's living in the trailer mm -hmm. because their money and their taxes fund a lot of the demise that goes on in urban communities believe mm -hmm. it or not Jay-Z is a billionaire but a lot of his money if you check the background and records helps sponsor the bill penitentiaries <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying in jails you know these people pay taxes if you don't pay that shit you fuck so most of us in this corporation call it are guilty by our association and the only thing we can say is we trying the best we can but when you make it to that certain bracket of that billionaire millionaire game you gotta do what's, what the fuck is told to you cause you walking on a thin line Jay-Z make one false move they go they have Bill Cosby his ass you feel me they mm -hmm. Bill Cosby his ass if Kanye West don't let them do whatever the fuck they doing to him under that mind cause whatever the fuck going on you know I got a feeling now I will hope this don't happen but the way he's going it's like he's going to end up dead in the next three years. Committing suicide, they're going to find him dead. Right. Out of nowhere. You're next not going to be satisfied until that happens. Right. Three right. to five years. I guarantee, and I'm not saying this. I will hope not. But looking at looking at him on TV and watching how he functions, I mean, I see, I know a medicated person. You can tell when people are medicated. You know what I'm saying? Just being in the medical field, just looking at people and seeing how he functions. That guy, if he keeps going in that path, that man ain't gonna be right, and he ain't gonna mm -hmm. be around in another side. I guarantee you, they say end up saying that that man end up dead between between the next three years or five years. He gonna end up committing suicide. They gonna find him dead some motherfucking day by himself. Mm -hmm. He's unstable. Mm -hmm. You so already I mean, know, bro. So, so, and, and I, I think this is plaguing melanated people on a whole. Like we have a psychological uh, disposition. To not really take time and understand things for what they are. We so reactive. You know, our, our yeah. nerves are just on edge that we huh. react to things yeah. without without contemplating and thinking through stuff. Correct. You know, I, I mean, think we that, have to be more we we have to be more patient with our people. We have to treat everybody like a patient. I have my emotional impulses. I mm -hmm. can overly react. We all do it. Everybody do it. We're human. You know, mm -hmm. and with us being human, we have to accept that human nature. But when it comes to us, we have to be more um, forgiven to a degree, not forgiven for everything. But in some cases, man, we know that we all fucking crazy. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, I honestly feel bad for Kanye West and other people out there that's like him. You know what I'm saying? Other people out there that's like because there's a lot of people out there that's like him that's not heard. But they putting that man on the front line, on a, on a, on a, on, a, on a cover and in, a, in the public, but it's only a distraction for what's really going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of shit that's going on behind closed doors, and he's just being used and don't even know it. 
it's it, it you know it, it, it's shock treatment that they doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Kanye mm-hmm. West is a, is a fucking millionaire. He don't experience the shit that the average black person is experiencing every day going outside. He's a mere. It's like what Lil Wayne said. You know he haven't experienced racism. Bitch, you a millionaire. Since he he's but been a millionaire since he was like 15 I years old. I guarantee he he but right, he been a millionaire since he was 16 to 17 years old. Right. And I guarantee you if he if he go out left field in the wrong direction, he will experience that goddamn shit. Mm-hmm. So my thing is is that well, you can't compare a millionaire's bracket to niggas that's only making thousands and quarters and fifty cents or a hundred. That doesn't match. <laughs> it's a whole nother reality. Right. The system, man, when you deal with the politicians, they got something called starving a beast. We see a lot of shit that's is going on in front of our eyes is being stripped away and we're not even paying attention. The beast, uh, economically and politically, starving the beast is the citizens. They're, they're getting ready to strip and overly tax and make it really more complex for people to live. And especially mm-hmm. if you work, you're going to have to really, really, really work harder to even see something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yes, there's a lot of opportunity right now for blacks to do what they want to do because this so-called Trump dude is in there. But we ought to understand that all this stuff is set up and rigged. You have mm-hmm. a certain season of politics where you can, where you get a flow of, 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 of free, you know, free uh, Medicaid and this free fucking welfare and all this shit. And you get another phase where they have to cut the shit off. You know, they have to ha- allow certain amounts of money to flow out there freely, be- you know, to keep the currency going properly if we understand how the banking system works. This mm-hmm. is all a game, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is all a game. And people's <laughs> lives are being played. It's bullshit. Exactly, man. So. And, it, and, it, and this, is what, this is what leads me to talk about paradigms, man. You know, we in, in Chicago, we come from Chicago, which is, in my opinion, and most people who will agree with me, if not the most, one of the highest segregated cities in the country. I mean, there's areas Absolutely. in Chicago where blacks and whites never mix and never deal with each other. They don't see each other. And Absolutely. we have a different opinion on racism than some people who grow up with that same racist as their neighbor for 20 and 30 years. They know that the European right. is racist, but that's your next door neighbor. That's a totally different situation. Right. Y'all share the same community. <clears throat> in in right. Chicago, we don't have we don't we don't commiserate we don't commune with each other in that way. So the racism right. is still in the era when we of Jim Crow and things of that nature, because we don't associate with the European in that fashion. So when we have icons right. like Prophet Noble Ali, peace be upon him, Elijah Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, Father God, Allah, peace be upon him, Mega Evers, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, the list goes on and on. We take a different perspective to these iconic people, particularly Noble Drew Ali, bro. Like Noble Drew Ali has truly been misunderstood and misrepresented in the black community, man. Why do you think that is? I mean, I think that I think that one one reason we have a lot of arrogancy going on, and we like to compare modern times to times from 1910 and 1911. Um, and we 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 you know modern times we classify Prophet Noble Jali as being pseudo because of a lot of things that we are aware of now, and none of us are really doing real field research. We get our information from these crackers who do the real field research, and we regurgitate it, <laughs> and we use that to, to compare contrast. To what he had to offer to the best of his ability. I mean, we talking about 1910, 1912. The man died in 1925 or 1920 before the Great Depression hit in 1930. Right. The first blacks came to Chicago. The first blacks came to Chicago on the low end, um, 42nd Street, in 1915. This is when you find the first blacks coming from down south into Chicago. Noble mm-hmm. Jolly came in 1910, and he died at a certain time period. So the man wasn't really. Um, he, I mean, he did the best he can. He, you know, they say he stole from um, the Aquarian Gospels or the, uh, the uh, from from uh, the I'm Two D Grant those books or whatever. But at that time, reading those esoteric information, it wasn't easy to get into those esoteric schools or those Rosicrucianary schools because it was completely racist. So even if he did divinely prepare it and copy and paste it and put it in his own direction to place itself in there, even if it wasn't what what they refer to as um, plagiarizing. 
I mean, most of the shit you read is a, is a plagiarization. Most of the shit you regurgitate, when you repeat after a hunky, is if you did the field work, you're regurgitating and plagiarizing because that's not nothing that you did. So you don't really know what, what the fuck is going on behind closed doors. You know, you're no different than them. The same thing with these fake ass so-called Afrocentrics who do the same shit. So I think that we, 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 um, Noble Jolly was one of the first people outside of Leo Hansberry, but one of the first people to talk about a uh, depth chamber, the esoteric school of thought, the metaphysical school of thought. Mm-hmm. Um, he gave you history of, of, of a free, um, a free nation of Africans who wasn't enslaved, even if the term ish in Moorish means to be like. So he chose not to be a slave, so he chose to, um, to uh, emulate these Amazon, and Amazon means free men. He wanted to be them. Mm-hmm. And he, in, in some cases, some things he said was off. You know, some things he said was off, like the connection between, you know, the Moors and Latin America or ancient um, mm-hmm. um, um, Mesoamer- Mesoamerica before, you know, we have Mesoamerica today. But um, some things is off, but yet still the idea to unify most people that's oppressed, which is the Latino and the African American, the thought, you know, it takes a spell to break a spell. So to a degree, Noble Jali was genius regardless to whatever religious institute he had. And we got to understand this man wasn't religious. He wasn't a Christian. He took you out of the Christian paradigm and formed his own type of Islam. And if you deal with his type of Islam, it leaves you kind of atheistic because it's not Orthodox Sunni Islam. He tell you that you see Allah in your fellow man. So he basically worships himself. So he offered you something a lot more better than what the fat, greasy-ass creature had to offer you or what mm-hmm. the fat, uh, or, 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 or what the Orthodox Sunni um, Arab has to offer you in a form of um, Islam. He gave you its own version. And I'm not talking about people that practice Orthodox Sunni Islam, but I'm talking about a lot of blacks that get involved in Orthodox Islam. They emulate Arabs and they kind of lose their identity. Mm-hmm. So he gave you his own twist of things. So my thing is, is that I think Noble Jali was genius, and I don't think that we should crucify him like that because he's a step in our evolution. You know, that's like Darwin. Darwin didn't know nothing about genetics. But are you, are you going to hear geneticists? talk shit about Darwin? No. Mm-hmm. He didn't have most of the tools that, that the geneticists and evolutionists use today to dissect things. He didn't. Mm-hmm. But they still respect him. The same thing with Isaac Newton and his understanding of the gravity. Mm-hmm. Men and people have a better understanding of gravity today than what he did. But are you going to hear White saying he was pseudo, he was this? Because in some cases, they were pseudo to a degree because they didn't have the skills that they have today. So if we compare contrast them to today, Darwin said today, some shit Darwin said was completely stupid. Look it up. But do you think the whites are going to say that he was pseudo? They don't do that. They recognize their ancestors and venerate their ancestors, and they don't step. They don't. They don't step down on them. This whole idea of Pan Africanism is bullshit. Because Pan Africanism, if it was real, we wouldn't crucify, or persecute our elders who came before us to help us elevate from where we are. If we didn't know Noble Jolly wrong, how would we know what's right? If we didn't know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrongs, how could it lead us was right? You can't know right without going through wrong. So we got to mm-hmm. respect that. The same thing with Dr. Anthony Jook, which is which some things he said wasn't right, but yet still he was the face of trying to tell people that people in Egypt had an African presence, regardless if the Egyptians was overly mixed for a long time period. Mm-hmm. They were. Yet and still we know that they wasn't mixed with white people. They were either mixed with people from the Near East who were at that time brown before the SLC 25 level even came. And they were also mixed with the indigenous people from East Sub Saharan Africa, East Sub Saharan Africa, that migrated north and adapted to those environments and developed their own subclay mutations and developed their own immunities within that environment. Yet still, they're Africans. But the racist scientists would classify these North Africans as something slick called basal Eurasians to try to separate them from the Sub Saharan parts of the continent, meaning that they came from below the continent or south of the continent. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the bullshit that we have to go through. But when man, goes into different directions, they develop certain traits, yet and still they develop certain traits, they all have the same pinpoint of where the speciation develop or derive from. So just because you have certain mutations or certain adaptations that's beneficial for you in the environment that you come from, that shouldn't separate you the mm-hmm. way the white man separates you. Well, let me ask so, you this question. Tra- oh, go ahead, brother. I don't want to cut uh-huh. your wisdom. Go ahead. So what I'm I'll trying to say you. is that the ancient, so what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we got to be careful <coughs> with a lot of stuff that that the devil, and I call him that because he devalues. He 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 devalues. He 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 pulls away. Shaitan means to separate or to to pull away. 
He pulls away. He separates. He divides. He conquers. He, he, he doesn't value reality in some cases. And this mm. doesn't mean just because you're fair skin or light skin that you're evil. That's another thing we got to get out of, the colorism that we suffer from. Something else that he offered you. He, he made you, some people believe that because you're fair or lighter, you're closer to him and you're better. And you have a lot of our darker brothers and sisters who don't feel, um, don't feel, um, they don't have confidence or self-esteem in themselves in some areas and they find problems with lighter skin people. And my thing is that regardless if the ancient Egyptians were light skin, or dark skin. They were indigenous to Northeast Africa, whether they were indigenous or endogenous, from an early black migration that came back in 10,000 years ago before Kemet was established. They still had a civilization and, 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 and an empire that developed in Northeast Africa and nowhere else. Just like you asking the average Puerto Rican or Dominican who's been in those islands for four to 300 years, and they were recently made, because they're crossbreed between Spanish, Sub Saharan African, and native population. A lot of them don't know a lot of shit about Spain. And a lot of them don't know a lot of shit about Africa. Some of them do. You see it through their music and their rhythm, but it's a hypercultural society. I don't mm -hmm. think the average Dominican is worried about Spain. I don't think the average Puerto Rican is worried about Puerto Rico. I mean, Spain either. I think that they were, they're going to, a Dominican would tell you, I'm Dominican. A Puerto Rican would tell you, I'm Puerto Rican. You know, mm -hmm. they were going on with their life. And that's the same thing with Kimmich. Some people have been up there for so long, they didn't know no other place. Hell, some black people in America that's been for 400, 300 years, they say that they ain't African no more. Mm -hmm. They American. They always been here. And what do you think a nigga in Egypt in the Nile Valley was thinking, even if they were a result of some back migration, was thinking uh, when somebody asked him where did he come from? If you've been in the area for seven to 8,000 years, all you know is they're part of the Nile Valley. So that makes them Northeast African. Tracing mm -hmm. back, going through the human genome, testing the human genome in North Africa, the furthest way that they can stretch outside of the Tyrian culture it's 15,000 to 13,000 years. This is what they classify as indigenous. So the Iberian culture went extinct before the Iberian Marusian, but I don't like to say Iberian Marusian because that's outdated. They know now that the people that were the African Libertine Marusian population was African Libertine Marusians, meaning that they were indigenous to some Sub-Saharan African features, some North African mostly, and some Levitian um, um, DNA that came back from the Near East all came together. So these people have been up there for a long time, but they were still African. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and, and so, so even when we talk about some of our eclectic teachings, a lot of people, you know, we mm -hmm. take on this this atheistic moniker, man. Some shit that don't never should have never should be involved in an in, in African paradox. Even those who believe that they're Aboriginal, there is no vestige of being an atheist involved in the people of color. We've always been highly spiritual people. That's always been the case. Um, the modality of the military encampment called Christianity, which in my opinion was a military coup under the auspicity of war. That's why we have a geopolitical military complex called the United States right now, because religion had right. turned into a means of bringing in military warfare and psychological warfare under the auspicity of trade. I mean, we got that from Kemet. We learned that from Egypt. How important trade right. is when it's manipulated and how it can control people when you control the trade. And religion is one of the doorways into influencing the people. When we have certain eclectic right. leaders like Noble Drew Ali, Father God Allah, who also had a lot of esoterical and metaphysical concepts. We had a conversation earlier, man, and you was breaking down the Asiatic black man into modern day science, man. And I was like, bro, they need to hear this because it's never been spoken of in this in this manner. And it really gives homage to people like Father God Allah, who was truly ahead of their time. And they were the Kanye's back then. Because back then, they were ridiculed by their own people. Oh, they're crazy. Oh, they're nuts. Oh, they're this. But they were visionaries, and they were not ashamed to go ahead and step out on a limb and say some things that might not be popular. So when we talk about the 5% nation, which is another jewel in our history, that we need to protect. We don't have to live in, the, in that era, but we need to use that as a foundry tool. Explain the Asiatic black man in science, bro. How do how do how are we Asiatic, the original or Asiatic black man? Well, the term Asia is a Akkadian word. It comes from the word Asu, and it means the East. Even the term Amu, when the ancient Egyptians used it, it meant people from the East. But outside of that, I mean, 
Africa from where we are right now. That's east of where we're from. I mean, if we want to use that and play with it. But uh, outside of that, we go back to time to study, you know, again, main lineages or half locals or sex chromosomes. There's a strong probability, a possibility, that the marker, half of the EM96, developed somewhere in Saudi Arabia. I used to run with the East African, I was on that campaign, but it's looking more like it developed in Saudi Arabia, possibly. Um, I'm not saying humans came out of the Middle East, and that can, and you know, that, that can also go in that direction when it comes to human evolution. We can't be, we can't look at things in, uh, through intuition and face it off feelings because we want to feel a certain way. We have to accept things for what it is. So we don't know, you know, right now, yes, the African theory still stands out where our feet develop that, but yet still it can go in any direction. I mean, we found Jabella Hood in Morocco. Uh, man has found um, 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 Homo sapien adotu, um, um, the Ethiopian fossils that they found in Kabish, and they just found another, um, the, jaw, the jaw of a modern Homo sapien in Israel, which goes back 176,000 to 194,000 years old. But um, Jabel Hood, which is Homo sapiens sapien, even if it was archaic Homo sapiens sapien before we became um, the our branch of the Homo sapien that we are now, he is the oldest form that we see that developed 300,000 years ago. But we know the tools that he used. We found they also found some of those tools in the Congo area. They kind of like that's under the underrated. They don't talk about it, but they also found those tools in the Congo area that goes back 300,000 years as well. But they don't talk about that publicly. But they have found those same tools. I'm sure Jabella Hood wasn't from Morocco. He just died there. I personally believe that the species of who we are developed somewhere in um, Cameroon or somewhere in, um, in um, Chad, around that area. And they went and split into different directions. And another reason why I can say that is because they also found um, a 6,000-year-old young boy skeleton that was from South Africa. The fossils were 6,000 years old, but the genome that they were able to abstract from it was between 350,000 to 276,000 years old. So I see humans going into these different directions. One group goes south, one group goes east, another group goes north. And you can't, fossils can't be preserved in tropical marshy areas like that because of the environment and climate. So they're not going to find too much in tropical West Africa like they could in the dry desert or in certain parts of the Kalahari Desert in South Africa and certain caves that they found in Ethiopia. But anyway, when we go into the Great Rift Valley of Haplogrussi TM-168, um, it's through him who leaves out in Mighty Kanji DNA L3, who leaves out and goes somewhere near Arabia through the Red Sea and gives birth to D and E and C and F and possibly when D and E splits off independently, it happens in Arabia. And some of these E's turn back around and go back into Africa from where their great grandfather came from, which is CTM 168. Uh, the grandfather came from who you know this is a, this is not just one phase or one time period it's not like 10 this is thousands and thousands of years and if we mm -hmm. go back in time we find the Nubian complexes and Nubian tools in Saudi Arabia they just saw the finger bone in Saudi Arabia which goes like 84,000 years Nubian complexes which is two they found which is 100,000 years humans been going in and out of Africa at different time periods this is just the one that was most successful it was the one that occurred 70 to 80,000 years ago they used to say 60,000 but based off of the human genome we got to stretch it back a little bit further probably 100,000 years ago but humans been going in and out for a long time they even found uh, modern human genes in uh, Neanderthal I think that uh, the mother she was in Spain it was in her uh, in, some, uh, in, a, in a leg bone if I'm not mistaken um, that shows modern humans was leaving out that was like 176,000 years but that was in one area when they tested Neanderthals later in other areas, they had no human genome in them. It was just this one area. The other ones had none. So, you know, even in the, it was a, it was select breeding in certain areas that they were more connected or was able to interbreed amongst one another than in other areas. But outside of that, when it comes to an Asiatic black man, it's the possibility that, a large possibility that happened with E before the subclades developed somewhere in the Middle East and came back into Africa. And at this time period, it was possibly 70 to 80,000 years ago, and they were still black, phenotypically and everything. And when they come back mm -hmm. in, they go back into Africa, from Saudi Arabia to possibly Ethiopia or Upper Egypt, and they start to spread. EM96 gives birth to EP177, which later gives birth to EP2, which later gives birth to, you know, EB38 and EM215. And EB38 developed its own subclade branch somewhere around the Horn of Africa. And EB38 leaves through the Horn of Africa 
through Sudan and then goes to the Sahara. And by the time it makes it to the Sahara, it goes towards Niger. Around Niger, this is around, it goes in that area around 19,000 years ago. The mark itself, EB38, is 42,000 years old. So it migrates towards the Sahara and then it goes further west and it goes into the Niger point because it's all in green Sahara. This they go in this direction 19,000 years ago. Then it develops this M2 subclade. And from that M2 subclade, a lot of them is in the Sahara. And then around 11 to 7,000 years ago near Niger, they developed a sickle cell to fight off malaria. So a lot of these men go into the tropical steam jungles that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talks about in his little strange way. And they amalgamate with early hunter-gathering populations who were happy with A and B and LOs and a few L1s that was already down there. And some of those people that was already down there even had some genes that goes back to some archaic homo, say, I mean, um, um, human, possibly homo heterobiganzas, which is the, the father of Neanderthal and Demosovan. This branch never left Africa, which is the homo Rhodesian man, you know, branch that they found, that scientists are classifying as ghost genes. But they didn't have that. The, EM, the EB38 didn't have that. It was the people that they bred with that was already down there that, that had that. And they amalgamated with them. So if we follow this E marker coming from Arabia, it makes sense sense that you are the Asiatic black man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If we base it off lamb eyes and plate tectonics today based off the European map of what they say was what's Asia, what's Africa, whatever, we can play that game too. We can give Father God a lot of Honorable Elijah Muhammad some credit, even though their way of explaining it was completely pseudo, but there is truth in it like Noble Jolly teaches us. There's truth and false to it strangely rich. So the truth of it is there is a strong park completely based off land, based off the map that they call Asia and Africa and plate tectonics or whatever, based off their geology or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's a strong possibility, I mean, I mean uh, there's a strong possibility that the black man did come from, this branch of black people did come from the Middle East, back into Africa. Mm. Mm. Based off geography or based off what they're saying, based off the location of where the marker came from. So you could say you were the Asiatic black man. And you, the E marker was in Arabia before Jay even came because Jay uh, possibly developed somewhere in the Near East. In some cases near Iraq and Iran and the oldest strands in the Caucasus area, which is also the Near East and Middle East. So the E marker was down that way before the motherfuckers came. Wow, man. See, I, I've never, I've never heard it said that way, bro. And see, and, and, and this is something that that I must speak on is scientific racism. You know, a lot of people say, okay, you can't just depend on science. Well, science is the foundation of proper understanding. Maintaining your rationale through science. This is what created Team Osiris. It's understanding that science gives you the foundation to be able to be re- to rationale with yourself. This is what's created the paradox mm-hmm. with Kanye West that a lot of people have a problem with. He's secure with who he is. But you got a problem with who he is. How insane is that? You got a problem with somebody that don't have a problem with being themselves. I want people to really think about that shit. You literally putting the brain power to judge somebody that is comfortable with themselves. But because you're not comfortable with yourself, you want to superimpose the oppressive mindset on another person of color. Because we emulate the white man to such a degree that we've forgotten what separates us from them and our innate science or ontology african ontology is very important to us it's sacred to us our connection to our ancestors the way that we worship our ancestors is indicative and important to us they we, we we shouldn't take a european approach to how we live every day but most of us don't have a choice like brother brother you know brother amir you go to work yes, every sir. day, but you're very conscious exactly. of the racism and oppression that goes on in your in your environment. If yeah. you had a choice, you I wouldn't go at, work for no damn cracker. I, I so how psychologically them, damaging is that to have to do some shit like that? Your, and when you look at your tax stub and you see where your taxes is going, <laughs> you paying for military, you paying for Medicaid, you paying for you paying for even racist people Medicaid. They don't even like you. You pay for just look at your tax bill and see where all your taxes is going. I'm guilty by association. Am I really innocent? Because if I can get up and choose to get the fuck up out of here. But I'm be honest, I don't want to go. Come on, man. I don't want to go. Speak on it, bro. 
Speak on that shit. I don't want to go. I'm comfortable <laughs> where I am, even though it's an uncomfortable situation, yet I'm still uncomfortable. You can't tell me I'm not dealing with cognitive dissonance right now. I can put it out there publicly. I know a lot of shit is wrong, yet still I have to get in where I fit in and make it be where I got to be. We all guilty by association. We should be running around here trying to crucify any goddamn body because we all out of our goddamn mind. It's just some of us pick and we're selective about what levels of insanity we choose to be and what we not choose to be. Exactly. So Kanye West chooses to express himself in that way. Mm-hmm. You got some brothers and sisters in RBG that got white, have white children and they still a fucking white man or woman. You know what I'm saying? They do it. I mean, these, I mean, I'm not saying that's what I do. I'm just saying that you have people. This shit exists. Exactly. It exists. You can't act like it don't exist. Right. You know, so what I'm saying is, is that, you know, you know, I choose my situation. I feel that I, I am an American. I just sent from Africa, but I'm American. I wouldn't deny my American, my Americanism because my ancestors fought in every war here. They still got them going through shit here. And if it wasn't for my back, America wouldn't even have its fucking flavor. Its flavor comes from Africa. Exactly. The struggle of Africa. You know exactly. What I'm so with that being said, I'm an African American. So you, you know, I do love Africa, but there's a there's a disconnect. We, we can't act like you know if I go if I go hang around a bunch of Nigerians, I can relate to them because I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't relate to them. I can't. <laughs> I, and, if you, and if you act like you can, right, man, I mean, you about that's to hurt you, some but feelings, bro. You about to hurt I'm some not feelings, gonna force bro. Myself to act like, no, I, I can't. No, I can't relate to a bunch of Nigerians. I mean, I mean that's a fact. And based off the culture that I live in, if it was a bunch of white boys, Puerto Ricans or whatever, that, that all came up in the same type of society as me, I probably can relate more to them because I live in the same society as them than a bunch of Nigerians. And Ooh, Nigerians that's that's too deep, bro. You're going you're going me. real deep. You're going deep but into the ocean, fact. bro. That's a fact. <laughs> Oh, Once you shit. take my tongue away, yes, my ancestors, some of them were stripped from Nigeria and Senegal and Gambia, or Senegal, Senegal, Gambia area, whatever, and they were slapped together. And my indigenous tongue was stripped away. Am I still a Niger Congo speaker? No. My no. language tongue, my, my tongue, I speak an Indo European language, and the branch that I speak is English. Isn't that and then strange? I speak a dialect of that American dialect. I have a dialect of that American dialect, which is based off whatever the fuck I developed. It's completely hybrid. Exactly. We fucking hybrids, bro. That's what the fuck we is. We the real X Men. And we don't want to accept that goddamn shit. It is what it is. We're hybrid. Exactly. Every American is a fucking hybrid. The average white boy ain't no fucking pure British or English. I mean, pure, pure, pure British or, or Irish. He's a crossbreed. You ask the average American white guy that's been for 400 years, hey man, what part of Europe you come from? He's gonna tell you, well, I'm half Irish, I'm a quarter British, and I got a little bit of Swedish in me. That's why real Europeans don't really respect Americans when it comes to genealogy. They call them, they, they, they're mutts. You know, they're, 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 that's what they are. The average British is not going to respect the American as if he's British. He's not. Hey, you know what Paul Mooney said, they, right? They're Yankees. Well, who? You know what Paul Mooney said, right? What did he say? Well, I don't know you get a family tree. A nigga might fall out somewhere. <laughs> a, a nigga will fall out. You're going to find, find one, at least one great granddaddy who was black. You go down south, the most reddest. Racist skinheads that had a great great grandmama somewhere down the line that was black. Look at the Melungeons in Virginia. The motherfuckers look white now. But if you go back in their history, they got a lot of black motherfuckers and the black men and white women. And when you look at the Melungeons YDNA, they E1B1A. But they look overall white. Autosomally, they are. Some of them are R1B, some of them are E1B1A, but the E1B1A is present there. So what I'm trying to say is yes. If you go into European lineages in America, they hybrids too. See the whole skin game that they created, these social constructs? Mm-hmm. That shit is real. Mm-hmm. Yet and still, when you go into the lineage of shit, it don't even make sense. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Think about it. You got Hispanics out here. That's mostly European. But yet and still, <laughs> you, oh, not all Hispanics, not all, now listen, not all Hispanics are genetically, you know, mestizo. Some Hispanics are much more European than others. Exactly. Some Hispanics are more mulatto than others. But yet, still, white Americans who's been here for a little longer, they start their little society, they classify all Hispanics as brown race. How could you do that? Mm-hmm. How could you classify all Hispanics as brown race and some Hispanics 
and Venezuela and Cuba. They're more European than some of you motherfuckers that's so-called American. Exactly. They are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, does, it doesn't make sense. It's a game. It's yes. all made up. It's bullshit. Yes. And like the brother said, you shake them with these motherfuckers' tree, they genetic tree, you're going to find at least one, one, one grandparent that's black. We all fucking hybrids over here. We're all bastards. I don't give a fuck. We're all bastards. The Hispanic is a result of a rapist Spanish man who fucked native women who left their babies behind. You think when Mexico Ooh. fought against Spain? <laughs> do you think when Mexico fought against Spain, they was like, oh, these are our fathers. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to be, we're going to know. These motherfuckers knew that through Spanish left they ass. They were a renegade Latin speaking country. They were a crossbreed. They're mostly mestizo. They're a crossbreed between Native American and bastard children of Spain. That's what they are. And a few got some African in them in between, like Yanga. And you go to certain parts of uh, Mexico where you find, you know, little waves of African streets that they had. So overall, Mexicans are mestizo. But when these Latin American countries fought against, and that's Veracruz, Mexico, too. But when these Latin American countries fought against Spain, they wasn't fighting them like, oh, this, this, the Spaniards are our uh, bloodline. They became independent. Dominican Republic even fought Spain. So what I'm saying is that, you know, the Mexican holiday just happened. The holiday when they beat France. Mexico beat France and they beat Spain. May, may, may I cut Mexican your wisdom for about... a minute, brother? Can you hold your wisdom for a second? I got to say this because it's in my spirit, bro. Those that's listening in. Normally, this would have been on Team Osiris's channel. We had some technical difficulties. We're going to republish it over on the Team Osiris channel. So I use my channel. You know, family is family all the way across the board. You're not, you know, Amir Kamara and Gozi, however you, you see him, you're not going to hear this information away. You haven't heard breaking, you haven't heard people talking about mestizos or no, understanding what the father, Clarence Jobbles, was talking about when he said Asiatic black man. You haven't heard it from this perspective. And I want to say this right now while the brother's on the line because he's a truly humble brother and we we understand psychological warfare. And, <clears throat> and Gozi doesn't want, I'm not speaking while the brother's on there. I'm speaking, this is my brother. He's not a spook god or anybody to be worshipped. But truly, the conscious community owe this brother so much. When it comes to understanding DNA and understanding properly proper historical cognates with the DNA and science, if it wasn't for Ngozi, it wouldn't have happened. I'm going to say that, and I'm going to stand on it. If it wasn't for Ngozi, wouldn't nobody understand how to correlate history into genetic science and genetic anthropology. So I just want to say that. So when you hear terms like mestizo, you ain't heard nobody talking about it because they're not studied in it. It's not saying nobody's better than anybody. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that we got to start paying homage to our people that are here today and get over these inferiority complexes. We too quick to, to attack each other and not acknowledge the genius in all of us. Every last one of you are, uh, is a genius in the making. You got to tap into your calling. Whatever your spiritual calling is that makes you um, extraordinary, tap into that and cultivate it. Stay in your lane of where you are excellent, like a Kanye West. Strive to be comfortable in the skin you in. So I just wanted to put that out there, brother, brother me. I'm sorry, but it's oh, got to be acknowledged, bro. Yeah. We going we can't be passive I no say. more about that. That shit got to be acknowledged. I bro. say. I ain't trying to put you on front street, brother. <laughs> but no, we just no, gonna no, say no. what the and fuck it, it is. is. You and, feel? And, and, and it's needed, and I pre and I appreciate that. And and and, and I recognize it coming everybody, because all of us are unique, and we all got to be able to explain. We all got to. Uh, we all have. All of us have a brilliancy to us. If you're alive, you have it. You feel me? So I mean, and I appreciate that, brother Consul. And, and and I appreciate that, and, and and it's all needed. But I always look all of us look at, look at all of us as one. We all moving as one collective consciousness, expressing itself in different ways, uniquely. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's all love. But we we have to talk about what's going on, and we have to talk about this shit is not simple. It's not simple at all. It's complexity to this stuff. You know, we have mm -hmm. to know what's going on. We have to talk about the whole story. The whole story, you know, a lot of us in the Afrocentric community, we praise these Africans, and I love indigenous people from the continent, but a lot of them don't even got respect for you. They make fun of your situation. 
They call you all types of disrespectful terms. They don't look like look at you like you're complete. And I don't look at them bitches like they complete. <laughs> I didn't go that direction too. Because a lot of them motherfuckers was in cahoots with the cracker and they helped get you away. I'm not going to let them bitches slide. I'm not going to say no bullshit to these fake ass conscious niggas talking about they didn't know. No, they didn't give a fuck. They didn't give a fuck. My tribe is in tour with your tribe. Your tribe is troublemakers. Get rid of them niggas. Get rid fuck. of them. That's how they was thinking. That's right. That's how they was thinking. That's right. I want territory down there. That niggas got some good, some good yams down there. They got some good resources down there. You know what I'm saying? I want it. The niggas in the way. Get rid of them. Hey, the silly we, silly boy, was fighting against the men for we. a long time. The silly silly was fighting against the men for a long time. The Mandinka, a Niger speaking group of people. The upper class man beat the own slaves. Hmm. But he meant to Musa. Hmm. And that's not blaming on Islam. Fuck is, let's take his fuck Islam. Let's take that out of Africa. Niggas, they had issues before that. You don't right. think so? Right. Go on the walls of Kemet. Look at the Kemet. You saw in Kemet, you see Nubians bringing other Nubians to Egyptians. Why is that? Why is that? You find the so-called groups of Nubians who were Egyptianized bringing other Nubians from the far south to the fucking people in Upper Egypt. Aren't these people all African? Yeah, they was African. The Igbo and the Europe have been fighting against for years. It's an outdated book called The Chronicles of Ifa, written by Adise Kundeo. You know, one who is clear sorrow becomes joy. He talked about the war between the Igbo and the Yoruba that's been going on for a long time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Humans are humans. We find ways to get into confrontation. Let a motherfucker stay in your house for more than a week and see how long you like them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is humanity. <laughs> this is humanity. Mm-hmm. Impulse is shame, feelings shame. Mm-hmm. Suffocation happens. When suffocation happens, you get agitated. After you get out, you get irritated. You find a way to disagree. You find a way to separate. You don't come in the way you thought you was gonna leave out. This is existence. So all I'm saying is, is that we have to get out of that, and we have to learn to recognize who we are and what we are here. I recognize my ancestors in Africa. I recognize it. Yet and still, I recognize what the fuck I went through here that them bitches ain't go through over here. Right. And they're coming over here off the shit that you went through. All these foreigners is coming over here based off your reparations. Recognize that blackness and recognize what you've been through here. Mm-hmm. So I'm not here to discredit Noble Jali. I'm not here to disrespect, especially the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was a master psychologist. I'm not here to disrespect Marcus Garvey. They all had issues in between in the back doors or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 and we all got skeletons in our closet. Who's perfect? Why would I crucify them publicly? Mm-hmm. Why would I go around here trying to have debates and open up lectures about discrediting the noble Ali? Because mm-hmm. we can say bad shit about Dr. Ben. But why would I do that? There's a lot of flaws and in in, in, in flaws and shit that they, that they were teaching. But why would I do that? These are all people of the struggle trying to find a way out to express themselves the best way they can. So they all, they all, they all got their place. They all play a role in our evolution. Period. Mm-hmm. I ain't perfect. Is this shit that I say right now? Thirty years from now, it's gonna be a young nigga that shit on everything I say, <laughs> and that's appreciated. Because <laughs> it's part of our, it's part of our evolution. Right. That's it's right. part of our evolution. I was trained by white people in school. So I can only give you what I have been, what they gave me, what they presented to me. We follow a program. They institutionalized me in their program in order to get their so-called certificate. Oh it's man, now you touching on something, bro. Any, any, anybody that go to school follow the same blueprint, the same regimen, period. It's so the I, same shit they teach them. So let me, ask, let me throw this at you. I'm gonna be devil's advocate here. So are you saying that when it comes to scholarship, we basically following Herodotus. Because I mean, he's, he's that's what creates a scholarship system, a, a universal system of knowledge when it came to the Greeks and the Romans. Let me ask you a question. Y- yes, we follow it. Yes. But let me ask you a question. Let's look up the term. How about this, Carl mm-hmm. But Let's look up the definition of scholarship and scholar. And right. then we don't, once I'll you do that up, right now. Once you, I, I want you to look it up and I want you to read it. Okay. Hold on. No doubt. So you want me to look up scholar and scholarship, right? Yeah, yeah. Look up scholar and scholarship. I want you to read scholar first, and I want you to read scholarship. Yes, sir. I'm going to use uh, Merriam-Webster. 
for the sake of those okay. who are asking what that what what primary I'm using. And the definition of scholar is a person who attends a school or studies under a teacher, i.e. pupil. The next sub definition is a person who has done advanced study in a special field or a learned person. And number three is a holder of a scholarship. Now that's scholar. Okay. Now you want me to give it. the definition of scholarship? Well, I'm, I'm gonna break this one down first. Okay. Yes, sir. What ni what nigga or human that hasn't went through a lot of experience isn't a scholar? Do we have to go through <laughs> his institution Ooh. for him to tell you what scholarship and what's what? Because it's niggas that learn how to work on cars who learn by other niggas who learn how to work hey, on cars woo. who probably learn from one person. Who learn how to work by cars? They don't even got the fucking paperwork. They ain't never been to school to be a mechanic, but just learn, but just watching the fucking car, and they pass it down traditionally from grandfather to grandson. Real talk. And he's just as good as the motherfucker that got the paper. Real talk. So isn't he a scholar? Real talk. It's based off experience. <laughs> so if I'm on a pupil, go up, dude. It's street shit that I go through that no white boy ain't taught me, but I learn how to fuck over a white boy from being in the streets. <laughs> That's scholarship for the niggas that's been around these motherfuckers. Right. You feel me? Right. Right. I was a people that I was a people the elders that showed me the game. That's right. That's right. And it's man. It's gonna be so mm. it's gonna it, it's gonna be so regardless. Whether I learned from 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 Uncle Bam Bam up the street or whether I learned from fucking Professor Pauly. It's gonna be so regardless. Yes. The game is gonna be so not yes. so. And I'm gonna set it, and I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna gain it through experience. Yes. Period. That's African ontology. For those of you who, Fuck with the big here. words, that's ontology right there. What it goes, he's talking about right now. That's the African mindset. Understanding that scholarship is on every level. Cultural on every level intelligence is gonna trump academic intelligence every single time. Bro, you go to school to be systematically a student. But your cultural that's knowledge right. is gonna always be with you. Go ahead, bro. It's niggas, it's niggas out here that's billionaires and millionaires that don't even have a high school diploma. <laughs> but they got people with high school diplomas that's working with them and working for them. Right. Hey, he don't have a high school diploma. He don't have a high school diploma, but he got college grads that work for him in his establishment. Right. Isn't that interesting? Right. The broad Beyonce just got her GED like five years ago. Man. Look it up. Man, and it was a struggle for her to get it. They don't know, do they? But she mm. has, but she, but she have, but she have people that work for her that's college graduates. They go to school all their life. They put themselves in debt to work for motherfuckers that don't even got it. You know, y'all know how many white motherfuckers out here that own franchises based off uh, family inheritance and shit that don't got fucking diplomas or degrees. Come on, man, we gotta be careful with this shit. <laughs> and I'm not against school. School is needed. That's right. To get in certain ropes. School is needed. You know, you, right. get, you get your shit to get what you got to be, but don't stay in it. You're getting your shit to get what you got to be to create your own. Just so you can, you know, have the, the paper or, or the certificate or the license to show that, hey, okay, I got my shit, it's cool. To mm -hmm. get your own. But at the end of the day, you're getting your certificate from a pirate, a motherfucker that came over here <laughs> and destroyed every fucking thing. Oh, you gotta pay taxes shit. on you gotta pay taxes on land to a gangster. If you paying taxes to to, to a person to, to a person to a to, to, to you paying state taxes to pirates. This state don't belong to these motherfuckers. They took this shit. Man, they're extorting you. They're extorting Man. you in a cool way. So you are paying taxes to free land that was stolen to the same pirates that came over here and annihilated people. Man, the establishment you that we know is corporated America. The establishment that we know as corporated America was created by pirates, thieves, mm -hmm. murder, bloodshed. Mm -hmm. So they created these fake ass institutions only so that you can go through them to get everything that you got. Mm -hmm. So you can just basically, you're gonna go, we're gonna go through them and go to their school so they won't bother us. Mm -hmm. I got my paper, man, just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But these niggas that you're going through is murderers. They descend from murderers. The establishments come from bloodshed and murder. So either way, it's thievery. <laughs> you paying taxes on a house to people that stole land. Does that make sense? That's another thing. We don't even understand the Social Security Trust. We operate as chattel slaves while they operate under corporate auspicity. When Donald Trump tell you I ain't got, I'm not showing you my taxes and I can file bankruptcy when I want to, 
Instead of us understanding that, <laughs> we psychologically damaged because of our slave history. And all we see is white man. But you don't see that he's telling you and giving you knowledge of how to operate in a capitalist system. How can you be in a capitalist <laughs> system and you're not a capitalist? How can you do that? But then you say the European is doing this, that, and the third. That is, it's amazing to me, bro. This shit's amazing to me. It's a game. No one gives a fuck. The machine gives a sense of care. <laughs> Your life is driven by a fucking button. A button. A system. Come on, man. I'm telling you, bro. It's, 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 it's fucked up. So for me, I don't get caught up in the paradigm or the games of black and white and all that shit. Yes, it's real on the surface. I can yeah. ride down the street right now, and if the wrong police catch me and he having a bad day, he might shoot the shit out of me. I don't mm -hmm. know. You know, it is what it is. Yes, it's real, but it's all programmed. It's supposed to happen. It's, it's supposed to happen because this is the reaction that the media is giving. So the average person will go through this shit. They're going to go through this shit because they want people to go through it because they create this. They create the paradigm. They create the mindset. You know what I'm saying? I noticed that they'll say something one week, and people will be all upheld about it, all excited about it, all sad about it. And then the next week they say something else and we forget about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the Kanye West thing is kind of like die out now. Now they talk, get ready to talk about something else. Some childish Gambino dude. Now they talking about the Gambino. That's what I'm, that's, that's what I'm saying. Whether you're a fag they, they or not. Control, crazy. They control you. They throw the fads and not what's what's what. And then look, look, what's funny is childish Gambino. I, I love his music. Right. But he's, he's married to a white woman with two kids, Bob. <laughs> Kanye West. You know? He's been, like, seriously. Uh, like, we don't see what's really going on. They control your fucking mind and your sentence. They give you what they want over what they don't give you. I publicize shit all day on, on Facebook just to see people react. And people just really react. We're an impulsive species. And they know the same shit that I know. Mind control. It's bullshit. Hey, I've always asked our people, if you was in a position of power like the European, would you write a library that's not biased towards your people? Would you promote books that talk about the equality of white people? Hell no, you're not going to do that. You're going to talk about your shit's going to be biased to your culture. So what it makes you think the library you walking up in ain't biased to their culture? In order for him to stay in power, he has to put himself in the Max Planck Institute with genetics, 23andMe, the DNA testing, the hospitals, all of them. You know, I look at the medical records, man. You read the shit. They, say, they always say African Americans or somebody else is more prone to these diseases over white. That shit always. That know, should be blowing they find, me they, too. They, they, they find they find fossils. They say those Sub-Saharan Africans was here, but then when you go into the base root of the genome, it comes out of Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, they they, they don't, you know you know it's it, it, it's only to empower them. They're doing their job. Mm -hmm. The white boy is doing his job. Mm -hmm. It's his job is to survive. And in survival, you have to protect your 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 your, your you. You have to protect you. Your variation of people. He's protecting his variation by keeping his lives alive. Fuck you. There's nothing wrong with that. He's doing the right thing. Self-preservation is the first rule of nature. The only ones that's not doing the right thing is us. Us. Mm -hmm. So that means since we're not doing the right thing, we deserve everything that's going on with us. Because we're not doing what we're supposed to do collectively. Exactly, bro. We're every fucking well. <laughs> we're everywhere. <laughs> Niggas is everywhere. Uh, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Moor. I don't like whites. <laughs> I like whites. I'm black. Oh, no, I ain't black. I'm this. I'm no... Up, down, left, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Niggas is moving like fucking quarks. Up, down, turn, strange, top and bottom, goddammit. They everywhere. <laughs> And then the puppet master, the European, is all in the suburban areas, living pleasant, controlling your shit. Keeping the niggas in hellfire, confused and stupid, while they organize and structure and structurize and everything that they have to do. <laughs> That's a oh, damn shame. Man. It's wild, man. It is, man. It's funny. <laughs> it's just <laughs> every single time, you know, we, we are afraid to be trailblazers. Like, how much gumption did it take? Elijah Muhammad to even speak on what he was talking about. The nerve. You know how much nerve it took when black people that you not we, we not realizing that in the 19 early 1900s it's totally different from 2018. 2018, you could just walk in your car and drive your ass around like you want to. You can turn on your computer, you can go to your refrigerator and get food in it. 
<laughs> you can you can you can wait go get your clothes from the european store and put your european clothes on you can do all of that well in back in elijah muhammad days you lucky if you had two pair of pants if you had two pair of shoes you was wealthy for a black person back then Damn you know right. what i'm saying to have a refrigerator a refrigerator was a was an ice box and you better hope you can afford ice That's so right. that man made that that man made thirty million dollars. I think thirty to twenty million dollars in nineteen sixty something or nineteen seventy. Yeah, that's how much money he had. That was a lot of money back then. Yeah, that's the equivalent to over a billion dollars now. Yeah, yeah but he was getting money. <laughs> he was getting money, and he told the white man in his face that he was a devil. I don't give a fuck what tools or what books he used to say it. He said it in an organized whether the cracker thought he was joking or not, and whether he took him serious or not. It mm -hmm. helped create people like Malcolm X. Right. It helped build people like him. You That's know what right. I'm saying? Like, it is what it is, bro. We we got to get out of that shit, man. Like, yo, all these people had flaws, and all these people, they were human. Mm -hmm. you know I'm man, it, it's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. It's fucked up, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, that's why I really wanted us to speak on a lot of these present-day events that's going on. Because as, as people on the whole, man, black people on the whole, and I use that term black because I'm an American. OK, for all you that are real strict on what you are, that's your choice. I'm American. That's how the fuck we talk in Chicago. We call ourselves black. We know it's African and we know it's Moorish. Look, more, the Moorish regime came out of Chicago. So trust and understand we're fully yeah. conscious of that. I'm using the term black to make the conversation easy without f clouding that shit up. Well, us as black people, us as black people have a decision to make because the price of freedom is death. I don't care what type of history you study. No group of people have ever been free without accepting death as the outcome. And we have become Damn desensitized real. to that shit. When, as far as black men, we are become effeminate, emasculated men. We do not. Oh, we man. fear death more, more so than the religious person waiting to go to heaven. We got this big fear of injury and death. I don't know what, where that come from, bro. But all we got to do is I mean, be 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 threatened with that shit, and we back down. Like, no, nah, man, no, nah, man. I mean, just, they put the, they put the. We gotta understand post traumatic stress syndrome and the traumatization that the people went through. I mean, you take children and families and have them watch big, strong warrior black men get slaughtered, and every messiah that they throw at you, Malcolm X, Dr. Martin Luther King. What I mean by they threw at you because these people use their media, their TV, their television for them to have the, the light that they have. You know, believe it or not, as great as Malcolm X was and as great as the Black Panthers was, they still was on the media and the TVs of the crackers that control the whole media. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that when we look at this stuff and we see it, we watch them get slaughtered. We watch mm -hmm. our African ancestors get slaughtered and we watch our revolutions get slaughtered. That kind of put us in a milder state. It put us in a state like, oh, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to go there because we've mm -hmm. seen torture. So we, we have a lot of fear. Bottom line is niggas are scared. When you get to the core of a, of a lot of these people, they're scared. They fear. Yeah. They fear a lot. Yeah. They take shit out on each other more than they take shit out on other people. Why? Because they're scared. Mm -hmm. And you got a few people that's starting to see that shit and they they be like, man, them motherfuckers are scared at the core. Mm -hmm. They scared. Mm -hmm. Fear is embedded in us, bro. That's one thing Kanye West said is he has fear. It's what's getting people to be manipulative and all this other goofy all this ass shit. shit. That's yep. kind of true. That's real talk. It's fear. That fear is These a These motherfuckers watch their ancestors die. They watch their mamas get raped. You know, anytime a baby can't do nothing to defend his mama, he watches his mama get raped by a white man. He's mm -hmm. sitting up there doing that shit 300 years, and then he turn around and daddy leave him. You know, you know, it, 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 it's, it's really fucked up. It's hellfire, bro. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Looking at the communities that we got, a lot of us be bothered with each other because we ain't got no choice. And then when one of them get when one of us step our foot out of the out of the bucket, you know, crabs try to pull us back down. We we start to get jealous of one another. And then we say that he's trying, he act like he's better than me, or he acting like he the shit because he don't want to fuck with us no more. Mm -hmm. But the bottom, he really had no other choice but to fuck with y'all because y'all was living amongst each other. Now he got the opportunity to get away from the shit. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> you should try to find a way to get out of the shit. <laughs> Yo, ghetto, your ghettos and your communities and your hoods is trash. It's 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 it's, it's the wasteland of the, of the of the hunky. I can right. take you to Chicago and you go to a certain neighborhood. It's pleasant. You go in their backyards right next to downtown. It's a fucking shithole. 
It's fucked up. In every urban community, this happens. The ghetto is what it is. It's the gutter. It's <laughs> bullshit. Uh, so uh, why would you not want to make it out of the scraps? Exactly. Exactly. And why do I got to be different? Because I why do I have to be different? Because I choose not to have the same mentality that you had. Mm -hmm. You don't even be into the same shit no more. Well, I probably couldn't do nothing but at that time of being to the shit because I had to do what I got to do to get by, and I was comfortable in that situation. That right. don't mean it's healthy. Right. Now that I'm healthy, and I'm realizing, like, man, you niggas are stuck. Let me get my ass up out of here because y'all ain't doing shit. Right. And I might right. not never talk to you niggas again. Does that make me better? No, it's called elevating. It's called getting older. It's called realizing shit for what it is. Mm -hmm. You're too toxic for me to fuck with you. I don't want to be around you. That mm -hmm. don't mean I hate you. You got to get yourself together and realize this shit about yourself. There's a lot of shit that goes on, man. It's crazy. It is, man. It is. And, 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 and it's a lot of hard pillows, pills that we got to swallow. There's a lot of things got to. that we got to deal with. Personally, I was just talking to a young brother the other day, and I said, let me tell you something. The European right now in 2018 is your natural born enemy because you're American. Now, other parts of the world, there's a different situation because of the intermingling of certain tribes. But here in Northern America, Correct. with that skin color that you got and those phenotypes that you got and where you live geographically, you have no history. So as of until we have justice, that European is your natural enemy. The second thing you need to understand is he is a natural born killer, a natural killer. It's a difference between a murderer and a natural born killer. It's a difference. And we cannot, but we tend to believe, brother Amir, that we're going to sit across from a natural born killer with a pen and paper and some goddamn laws that they wrote with a treaty. That shit, you can't sit across from a natural born killer. He will kill your children because he feels he's justified in doing so. He don't believe he committing murder. He believes he's doing something justly because he has his own justice system. So what makes you think you're going to sit across from the one that wrote the law? They got a right to break the law if they wrote it. So you think you're going to sit across from a natural born killer and be, a, and be diplomatic with them? Are you serious? Are you serious? And that's why we're not willing... To, move, to, to do what we need to do, bro. We ain't at that point. And, and my question to you is, bro, are we ever going to get to that point? Do you feel like we're going to get to that point, bro? Oh, man, the Gozi might have just dropped off. His phone might have died. I know he told me he was, he was traveling. So I'm going to give him a minute to call back in. But those that are, that are on the call, we got members of Team Osiris that are on the call. Um, what's your opinion on what I just stated, bro? I know we got trees in Heru, so I know it's an opinion out there. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah go I, ahead, King. I agree, I agree, man. I agree. This is Brother Triz, by the way. Yes, sir. Ah, Triz in the building. Um, I agree, man, with a lot of the stuff y'all that y'all are saying, and especially hitting the nail on the head with the scared, you know, topic, because we scared of a whole lot of shit, like, the, with, with the whole capitalist country narrative, right? Mm -hmm. Why are we not taking advantage of that? If, if this is a capitalistic place, we would probably be suited to go ahead and do something capitalistic, get that bread, right? And the thing is, now you got a president, he's throwing it in, in your face, really, which is what we would do if we got in office and, and we did the whole, you know, set yourself self up as a corporation. The shit that people talk about, right, even mm -hmm. in the community, quote-unquote community or whatever, set yourself up like a corporation, and that way you won't get shitted on so much, you know what I'm saying? You, you get, you get your, your, your bread or whatever. But we scared to do that. Like, we feel like if we do that, then we're, we're part and parcel to being bad people and we, you know, karma's going to get us or whatever. So we just rather, I guess, stay in destitute, you know, destitution or whatever and shit because we don't have to have any um, negative feelings about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even though you should have negative feelings about that, if your ass sitting around broke and shit, you're happy about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody going to come and save you. But if they come and save you, they're going to come save you with funds that they got from being capitalist. So you're going to be benefiting from that either way you know what i'm saying so yeah. you might as well just go on ahead and get into it you know mm -hmm. don't be scared about it and then mm -hmm. when you have your bread up then when you say something it'll it'll mean more it'll have more weight to it you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's right when you do want to stand up for something right mm -hmm. and you got your right to stand up for whatever you want to stand up for but, but i agree with you man you know we american we want to we want to be all these other things that are like sort of harmless you know what i'm saying like we want to be from this culture this 
coach and this social group and that social group. And it's like, that's fine and well, but are you getting bread with that? Are you are you helping your kids and stuff with that? If mm-hmm. not, then you might you might want to be like Donald J and these other dudes that they don't even say I'm Christian, I'm this, that. They say I'm capitalist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know exactly. Know yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, back to sorry, yeah you you yeah. back in goals. Are you there, Haru? Yeah, okay. I think Haru is about to say something. You there? Nah, I'm not here. I'm not here. Okay. Here. Okay. Oh, uh, no problem. Yeah, yeah brother in goals. We posed, you know, um, you know, a question about understanding that, um, like I said, I was talking to a youngster. At a lecture earlier uh, last week, and I was telling them, you know, you sitting across from a natural born killer, man. You're not sitting across from what is posed as a murderer. That's based on law. We live under natural law, but now we've been subrogated to arbitrary law. Arbitrary law is, con- is constitutions, statutes, codes, shit like this. These are man made laws. It ain't got nothing to do with nature, because in nature, if you kill my family member, I'm killing yours, if not you. But under the under these statutes and codes, I can't do that. Because one person kills somebody in Texas and get 20 years, the next person kills somebody in Illinois and get life. Because we under an arbitrary law system that don't belong to us and not indicative to our culture. So when you sit and cross a natural born killer, how you gonna be how you gonna defeat a natural born killer with a pen and paper and a treaty? Correct. When he wrote the law, he got a right Correct. to break it. That's right. So what's your opinion on that, bro? On nationality and understanding I that? I, I agree. You know, nationality is man-made. It means your nativity. I mean, our nativity, you know, which, which is our origin. Our nativity is, uh, is America. That's our nationality. That's our nativity. That's where we come from. I don't come from fucking Nigeria. I don't come from Ghana. Genetically, my ancestors do, and it clearly shows in my DNA. But right now, my nativity and my origin is Chicago, and I'm classified as so-called America. Um, nationality, it, it's all man-made. Don't get it twisted. By nature, by nature, we, 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 we are what we are. We are organism that's classified as homo sapiens sapiens based off the taxonomy of what's been given to us off our species. Right. But uh, even, even, even that in itself is a man-made word to describe a specific type of organism called homo sapiens sapiens. You just took it down that one little sentence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you took it there. I mean, that's what was brilliant about Noble Draw Lee and establishing our own codified nationality. It wasn't about right. what people think; it was what we needed. We still need it. We still need to develop our own nationality so we can mind our business and stop telling right. our shit to the world. No, this is our business. This is our nation business. Because the European got a nation, right. the motherfucker got a flag that you under. He don't tell right. you his business. I, you know, I, I think it's kind of stupid when it comes to the Moorish American and the African American thing because you got Afrocentrists who say, oh, we're not Moors, we African. But the first Africans who were called Africans who skipped your Africanus fought against were Berbers from Tunisia. They wasn't the, the Nigerians, they wasn't Senegalese, they wasn't Wolof, they wasn't none of those tribes of Sub Saharan African countries. Africa was actually a little area where a group of Berber or Amazite people were called the Afri which were people of the dust who were Berbers. They were Amazon. And this is who mm. Scipio Africanus conquered first. Mm. Later on, the whole continent was named Africa. So my thing is, is that if you go back in time, what really is an African? So how you gonna say, I, I ain't no more, I'm African. But nigga, the original Africans was Berbers. The same people that you say was more like it's stupid. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> you know what I'm we X-Men, bro. Honestly, man, you make you make yourself whatever the fuck you want to be. Period. Ooh. But at the end of the day, whether you call yourself, whether you call yourself more comedic African, the crack can see you as a nigger. And it, I hey man, I'm, you, you know I'm using that, right? I'm using that. I'm, I'm an X man, bro. It is what it I'm is. I'm using that, bro. And then, and then when you go, and then when you go overseas and try to kiss the Africans' ass and stay on their nuts. They gonna say, "Oh, my American brother." <laughs> you know, one of them. And then when you go to Mexico and you convert to Islam, they not gonna say, "Oh, this is my African brother." From Hell Chicago. no. They gonna say he, 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 he's an American Muslim. They classify Malcolm X as an American Muslim. He was right. an American Muslim. You feel what I'm saying? 
So you call yourself whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. It's already mapped out. It don't matter. To the crack of your nigga, out of the country, your ass American. How about that? <laughs> what, the fuck, what the fuck you going to do? You get mad? You get your RBG guns and say, oh, the black African power. That's not a reality. <laughs> it's Afro-American power when you go around them other people. <laughs> <laughs> That's one hundred million. million. <laughs> these, these, these are these are costumes that we wear over here to feel good. When you get out of your comfort zone and go around these other people, they annihilate that shit. Hey man, that's one man. I, I mean, Travel if you really want to know who you are. Travel the world, and I promise you, they're gonna call you American before they call you anything. I promise you that yeah, you can yeah. you can holler Africa Africa they're gonna say you're an American African though sir your calling card is America yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, hey, yo, right. when, 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 go overseas they're gonna call you American now, if they go to Africa they gonna matter of fact they gonna be they might kiss your ass are like, you over there kissing man they're gonna kiss your ass because they want you to spend all your money they're gonna trick you into some type of bullshit spirituality like Miles and Nobel was doing with the Earth Center in Chicago <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it out there. The little Earth Center shit, the bullshit, telling you that you can be nationalized as an African, and them mm. niggas was capitalizing on black people who work decent jobs, because everybody that's part of the Earth Center, them motherfuckers got money, and they pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to listen to a nigga talk about boo ba 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 bullshit. The bullshit. <laughs> Time I think it's speak metal netter, but it's mumble jumble bullshit. Yeah, you know, it's stupid shit. It's lies. It's lies to make you feel comfortable. <clears throat> so oh. I'm just here to tell y'all, it's bullshit. We need to recognize our presence and what we have done here. And I'm not making fun of the African indigenous tongue because I love it, um, African languages. I'm just saying stop holding them people's dick. That's right. They're more superior over you because they're not. They're trying right. to get over on you just like you're trying to get over on them. You're looking for liberation and you're looking to be free and you're looking to be a part of a nation and they're looking for your goddamn money and your, and your dollars. They don't give a fuck about you. Some of them do, some of them don't. Mm-hmm. That's right. You don't have to put yourself in a situation thinking that, okay, I have to get cool with him to feel complete. Or I have to get cool with him to feel complete. You don't need to be cool with nobody except who you are and what the fuck you've been through. Because you are your own experience. Mm -hmm. You are your experience. Mm -hmm. Period. So, it is what it is, man. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. <laughs> <laughs> the truth hurt like a mug, man. Truth hurt. And yeah, that's, that's the thing, man. You know, we... We have all of this technology. We have a lot of advancements at our disposal. And right now we just, it's our psychology that's really, really limiting us because of, you know, outwardly we have access to so much. And this is why it went over, Kanye's statements went over the head. Y'all don't understand. Kanye grew up in the same neighborhood I grew up in. He grew up in Hyde Park. His mother was very wealthy. She was making almost 200,000 a year. How many black women you know make 200000 a year. She was a curator at a museum, bro. You talking about a rarity? That shit right there is rare. And she sheltered Kanye. Kanye, when Kanye used to hang around us, Kanye would wear pajamas with, ho with house shoes, the big Scooby-Doo and the character house shoes, bro. Walking in the street, just chilling. He was oblivious to a lot of shit because that wasn't his environment. And so now you multiply that, Kanye West is a billionaire. Do y'all really understand the type of individual you're dealing with? He went from a, 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 mu a musician to an icon in the fashion world. Why you don't give him credit for that? He, he revamped the entire fashion world with Yeezys. He left Nike, went to Adidas, and tripled it. Checkmated it Nike, and now he's running the industry. Now he's getting ready to start uh, furniture made by Yeezy, home furniture. He's created an entire lifestyle brand, and he's a billionaire. So what makes you think his psychology is going to be that of a slave mentality? He's going to say, well, you know, if you apply yourself and so forth and so on, because he's been isolated from that world. He's not a subject to that world. How many of you have ever had a billion dollars in your bank account? So how the fuck do you know how he thinks? How the f you never had a billion dollars. I don't know what that shit's like. I'm barely, a th I ain't been a thousandaire. How the hell you know what a millionaire think like? And you never been one. And black. And a male. 
Let me get the fuck out of here with that. And that's what's killing to me. Everybody wants to apply their own psychology on one another. And as blacks, we have a serious, serious problem with that, bro. Serious, serious issue that we really need to address, man. We really got to be accountable for that shit. That shit is a serious sickness. Uh, we have a psychological disposition that we need to correct. We as, we as black men and women in this country have psychological problems that we need to address personally, not publicly, within our culture structure. We got to fix some things. You know what I'm saying? And one thing is being real with each other, man. We fucked up. Let's just keep it 100. Let's keep it above. We do not know how to stop committing anti-blackness. I commit anti-blackness every day. I catch myself and go, I don't know about you. I'd be like, damn, that was some sellout shit I just did. Damn, hold on. <laughs> did I just do this? <laughs> like, you got to catch yourself. You ain't perfect. How? Uh... When your greatest granddaddy is a motherfucking, is a cracker. Like, we got blacks in, the, in America, bro, that really think they ain't got no crackers in their bloodline. Think they Man, just pure crazy, something. Bro. They pure so, something. What's funny, to me, what's funny to me is, and I ain't saying names, <laughs> but you got niggas in the cops community go talk RBG, but go to the gas station and get the Vegas and Bunch, or go to the liquor <laughs> store and get certain liquor that's created and manufactured by them. How you gonna be a revolutionary but you're dependent on his substance? That's that that's some sellout shit. <laughs> I mean, do 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 that. Do the Africans that do the Africans own any liquor stores for you to get that 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 substance that you're drinking? Because when you take your money with that motherfucker face on there, you can't say shit like you know I'm here, so I got to do what I got to do to survive. That don't mean you got to goddamn it use his money to go buy his poison. You like to get drunk and high, motherfucker. So that's some sellout shit. So what the fuck? I'm just saying. Right. You drinking the same shit. You drinking the same shit as the white boy drink. So how you different? <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all you y'all drinking the same shit. Exactly, bro. Y'all smoke the same pot. Y'all eat the same foods. I'm just saying, like, 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 it's, like what the fuck really is a sellout? Though? I'm just trying to understand that. It's got to be a little bit more complex than that. What the fuck is that? You watch the NBA like Finals. Say, you watch the Super Bowl. You watch, you watch Love and Hip Hop. You get it. You. You you get excited when 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 a certain team win, just like he get excited. That's you right. Watch, I mean, you're doing everything that he does. I mean, what the like? We don't accept that we live in a hyper culture society. We all guilty by association. Man. When you pay taxes, Man. your taxes help pay for the military, and your and military expenses help do what? Raid other nations. Raid other nations. Did you know that? <laughs> it's only check stuff if you're working. It shows. <laughs> That's some sellout shit. <laughs> I don't give a fuck how many. I don't give a fuck how many dice you you wear. How many? How much? How much dreadlocks you wear? I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. We guilty. You can sell all the oil you want independently. That money still gotta circulate. You ain't doing it outside of America. You're selling that shit here. So how really? How independent are you really? Because you're still here, depending on, depending on his federal reserves with the green, with the, the green piece of paper with his face on it to get what you want. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm <laughs> See that shit. That I'm shit right there that. hurt, man. What the fuck? What the fuck? Really is a sellout? None of us are better than nobody, bro. We all in the same fucking situation. We all trying to make sense out of life, man. That's all we doing, bro. We all trying to make sense out of the shit that we in, man. Existence is not. It's not easy, bro. Especially mm -hmm. trying to live up, live up to the social construct that's given to us, man. We trying to stay healthy. We got a lot of issues. We got psychological issues. We got genetic inheritance that we dealing with that's all fucked up. A hereditary disorders. We suffer from obesity. We on drugs. We got all types of shit going on, bro. You know what I'm saying? People trying to eat and survive. You know, we got it, it's just a lot of crazy shit, man. We gotta do shit. That we we gotta do shit that we don't want. That we don't. Want. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a fact, bro. And I, I think so. So, what's a? I, I want to sound cliche-ish, but I'm gonna throw it out there for the sake of the listeners, man. We have people listening, man. Do you see a solution? Do you see anything changing? And I say in the next one of years. <laughs> I'm gonna throw that out. No, I mean I see. I see a solution. <laughs> you said no. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm a, I, I think scientifically. 
I don't think the human species would be around another four to five hundred years. That's just me. But um, when uh, it comes to us or our variation of people or our group, I don't or our breed or whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it coming together collectively. No, I see a, a group of us coming together and to create businesses, but I don't mm-hmm. see it happening as a whole. By the fact, I don't want to be bothered with a bunch of niggas any goddamn way. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to be bothered with them. They too fucked up and they too corrupt. I'm just being honest. So I'm cool. I just want to deal with a select few black people that's decent that really want to do something constructively. I don't want to deal with everybody just because they black. Because I know how fucked up my people is. So with that being said, why would I wanna why would I wanna deal with them? Some people some some shit some people so far damaged that the shit can't be reversed. I'm just being honest with you. So I like to deal with decent people that really won't change. So for me, I don't see it happening um collectively as a whole. I see it happening with a select few. Changing mm-hmm. and trying to do things to put themselves in the in a certain establishment to do better for themselves or a few a few a few of the people. Hmm. Wow. Hey, that, I don't want to cut your wisdom, man, but I just want to make an analogy real quick, man. What it comes down to is nature. It all comes back to nature. You can't outbeat that. Yeah. How, how was it back in the day? Some, some squads were was, 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 was legit. They were set. They had their bootstrap tight. They had their bread. They had their food. And then it, the next few, uh, whatever you call them, villages over or whatever, they wasn't doing good. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be pockets of people you know, that do good, and it's gonna be large groups of people, if they followers or whatever, that just get led in the wrong direction, and they doing bad. I mean, especially when we got more and more and more people, right? So that's just even more people that have to make a decision if they're gonna be, you know, followers, they're gonna be lost, or they're gonna just, you know, be about them and what's immediately around them, they people, and coming up, right? And, and, and um, regenerating through their DNA, having their kids, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's really all you can do. True. <laughs> And then be friends with people that, that's also thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> True. I mean, that's, that's real talk, man. That's real talk. I mean, really, as a, as a black man, I'm not a black woman. I can't relate, but I do understand my counterpart to a degree. The best thing you can do is try to be successful in this capitalist system. Know the system that you're in. Your identity, your nationality is personal. That helps your psychological development. You need to be proud of something. That's how your that's how your psyche works. It helps and it's healthy for your mind to have some sense of pride and belonging. That's just a natural response, auto response. We all need it. It's indicative to that. If the European ain't showing you that. That's why the European will go and we'll sit here and believe that there's monsters in the sea. And the European will go dive in the sea and say, here go your monster right here in my hand. That's how the Europe, because the European got confidence and knowledge of self. <laughs> and we don't want to deal with that. Be successful, that's why, man. That's why, I said, that's, why I said, that's why I said, hey, man, doing what he's supposed to do. And I'm not giving him credit. He is. Right. The niggas that's complaining ain't doing what they're supposed to do. He's right. He's surviving and living. That's what life is here for, to live. He puts himself up to the challenge. We scared of challenges. Exactly. Not all of us. But more of us, more of us are than we than, than, than there are that's not. How right. about that? Right. If you if you're African aficionado, nothing wrong with that because I love Mother Africa because that's my those are my ancestors, my ancient ancestors. Those are what laid the, the building blocks and the foundation for my existence. However, if you if you are that passionate, go to Africa, go live there, understand it. Become part of the culture. Become immersed in the culture so you can understand that perspective. But if you've never witnessed it, never been a part of it, then you can only be where you are, man. You know, and Goldie said this earlier today, man. It's not where you're from. It's where you're at. It's really, it's, it's true. It's not where you're from, man. It's where you're at right now, present day. Your now has a lot to do with your past and your future. If you can't deal with now, what the fuck is past for you? You're daydreaming. If all you can talk about is pyramids, what do pyramids got to do with what's going on the fuck right now? You got to put things in that proper perspective and keep them in the proper rational understanding and knowing when to implement that shit. There's a time and place for all that, man. Timing is everything. So it's so important that, you know, this consciousness that we talk about, you need a national consciousness and a national awareness and be connected to the people that are kindred to you. Because regardless of how you feel, millions of people that are so-called black 
that an American in this country died for you to be able to do what we're doing right now. They died for that flag. So you can't deny it. It's part of your history. It's even part of your genetic DNA. There's no such thing as American DNA. Try to go look it up. Try to find it. See if you can find an, an African-American DNA strand and tell me what it is. Give me the sex chromosome. Give me the sex gene for an African-American. Tell me what that, what that haplogroup is. Give me the mtDNA for an African-American. Don't tell me coming out of Africa, African-American. See what you find out. You're going to get your heart broke. It's called admixture. That shit going to break your heart. <laughs> and that's taught by the brother in Gozi taught me that. And that's another thing, you know, in closing in Gozi. Why, why do we have a problem with acknowledging when somebody teaches you something? Acknowledging, hey, man, you know, I ain't know that shit, but man, my man put me up on it. Why do you got a problem with that shit? Ego, insecurity, pussies. Because when you're a pussy and a bitch ass nigga, man, you ain't insecure like that. <laughs> Humble man, man. I mean, that's what it is. It's a form of pussyism. Bitch made. Who wants to know every fucking thing? I know I don't. Some shit I want to be, you know, I want you to Keep me ignorant, man. I want to know, you know everything, goddammit. Right. I don't want to know every fucking thing. If I right. do everything, shit, I, I wouldn't even exist. Oh man, that's so it goes. What I mean, what man? It's it's always man. I don't know, bro. This Hello. one here gonna be a classic, man. Yeah, Every time yeah. you speak on something, man, it be profound, bro. Um, yeah, we got, what yeah. you saying in closing, man? Just I don't know, man. It's, the floor is yours, bro. Oh man, I just say, man, peace and love to the family, and you know we got to keep it going, man. And you know we just gotta learn to love and appreciate one another a little bit more for those who have true awareness and be more patient with one another. No need to be upset or no need to crucify or persecute people because we all fucked up and I hmm? admit to that. I don't give a fuck who you is. We all fucked up. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I fucking don't want to hear that so though. Is that we, we, we all dealing with cognitive dissonance to a degree. All of us. But we have to be a little bit more merciful on one another because we all crazy. We all crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? White motherfuckers, they tolerate each other. They know how to fuck with each other better. They have institutions for one another that's beneficial for one another. And they're going to make sure that they fix their... That white man is doing everything he's supposed to do. Niggas not. That's why we sit up and complain and bitch and take it out on one another. Your life ain't straight because of somebody else. No, man. You choose to be in every situation that you choose to be in. Just be patient. Mm -hmm. That's real talk, bro. That's just real. That ain't shit but wisdom, bro. And trust me, it came out. It came with a price. This wisdom come with a price, bro. This shit ain't sweet. I should. You know, we come from the I motherfucking should. blocks. It ain't no. It ain't all motherfucking textbooks and and primary research. You want oh, some no. primary research? We'll take your ass on Lake and Ferdinand, nigga. <laughs> you want some primary research? We got some primary research for yeah, your ass. Yeah. Take your That's ass real. on Cicero and Pulaski. <laughs> <laughs> the real primary research, you feel me? On, on the real, you want to get some jungle? You're going to learn some shit. You're going to learn some shit in those areas, goddamn it, that you won't learn from Professor Watkins, <laughs> Professor Smith. <laughs> this nigga's going to show you how to get over on the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Man, listen, when I was back in my day, and I ain't criminalizing myself, I'm just saying, them same professors used to come buy shit from, from niggas in the hood. You feel me? <laughs> the same professors that we brag on was dopings, alcoholics, and blowheads. They ain't shit. They not. They're <laughs> just people. <laughs> We're all ordinary people. And one thing that most ordinary people on the planet like to do is get high and eat. Mostly get high. So a lot of <laughs> professors like to get high and drunk that you, uh, that you, that you praise. Or sort of something, you know, they're just weirdos. Some of your best so called scientific scholars are, are fucking homosexuals. I just watched Richard Dawkins say that child molestation was natural. He was molested. What type of sick shit that is shit that? Crazy. Bro? Who gonna listen to this motherfucker? Who gonna listen to that shit? Child molestation is natural? Listen, go look it up. Richard Dawkins, child molestation is natural. Pedophilia is natural. Some shit. This is some strange shit. I say this dude's a weird. Neil deGrasse Tyson, I love a lot of his work, but the man's an alcoholic. This nigga be talking lit. 
He likes to get drunk. Like, fuck them people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is what it is, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, man. That's 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 what it is. It's real talk, bro. Well, man. Peace and love to the family, man. Yeah, man. Well, you know, it's summertime, man. It's about just getting hot in Chicago. So, absolutely. you know, you got to get little and get smart. You know, just like everybody else out there, man, watch the violence and shit. You know, try to make try to make wise decisions. Never beat yourself down for the bad ones, man. Just move on. You're not perfect, and don't let no motherfucker try to put you in a position to be that. Just do you, man. Right. Do you to the fullest. That's you know, right. even when it offends the motherfucker, right. do it on purpose. Make them mad on purpose. purpose. That's right. If you know Life you can give them a nigga head, man. Make that day miserable. Make his day miserable. Fuck with them all day. Yep. You know, nigga, you hate me. That's I'm. A, right. I love you, nigga. <laughs> that's right. Real talk. Real talk, man. But that's what's what up, Kane. What, what kind of what's telling? What kind of what's telling everybody? Let me give you a hug. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> 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 Can I give you a hug? <laughs> Is it okay if I hug you? Hug <laughs> you, huh? Brilliant ass. That, that, brother, that nigga that know he brilliant. Smart. I would have never thought of that one, boy. Kanye, you a bad one, boy. Shoes finna hey, sell for $9.50. Now they finna sell for $9,000. Hey, man, we need to put that Paul Mighty Paul, uh, Paul <laughs> white boy, take, white boy, scared to take that tree because the nigga gonna fall out. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> Real talk, man. Oh man, it goes. He dropped, man. So, you know, with that being said, man, like I said, we just wanted to, you know, just talk shit, man. Like you would have a conversation at the barber shop, you know, just some rational. Real talking shit, man, without all the, the mumbo jumbo. You feel me? Not all the, you know, professionally, the cross, the cognate is not all that shit. You know, it's a time place. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just got to be rational thinking, man, and that's what this is. Um, So, you know, stop thinking about what's worth to you, man. How much is your freedom worth to you? What are you willing to do and what are you willing not to do? Be honest about yourself. Are you going to add to the revolution or are you not? You know, there's a way to do this. Um, we we, we forward-thinking people, man. We got opportunities here. So I know the Kanye situation, man, is one that's got people in a in an uproar. Well, I only care about the black people that's reacting to that shit. Understand that the, the motherfucking Europeans own the media outlets that releases this shit. Ain't no all-black media conglomerate like 20th Century Fox. So how the hell do you expect to get justice out of a system you got no even stake in? You don't own CBS, NBC, or ABC. Nobody of color owns that shit. So how do you logically expect to get justice from NBC, CNN, or any of them conglomerates when none of your people are in that position? So they don't, they're not going to be biased for you. So when, to, when Fox releases a news story, it's for the betterment of their groups of people and until we stop until we start thinking man you know we do need our own news you know news outlet we do need our own media outlet we do need to know how to feed ourselves and clothe ourselves until we start doing that then we just playing games with ourselves all that black power shit and all that shit that you talking is full gays it's straight up full gays because you're gonna tune in to tnn and you're gonna watch a bunch of niggas who are employees for rich white motherfuckers I was looking at um, the Cleveland Cavaliers and what they're paying LeBron James, who's a high price employee. And Dean Garrett is worth $9 billion. He secured the rights to Cleveland with $9 million. And then initially came with an, an extra $10 million every month. What? So Dean Garrett is the real MVP. LeBron just play on the goddamn court. So ask yourself, why can't LeBron, Kobe, that damn it, that Wayne Wade, uh, I can name a whole bunch of them cats. Why won't they just leave the NBA and go start their own league? 
Say, you know what? If LeBron left the NBA, would you do you think some players would follow him? You're damn sure Skippy they would. But guess what would happen? No sponsorship. No Nike, no Adidas, no commercials, no appearance money. Because that's money. Just like when you take your ass to work. Your back be hurting, you don't feel good, your baby sick. You leave your baby and they sick because Uncle Charlie say, Charlie say you got to come to work. And you're gonna do it. <laughs> you're gonna take your ass to work for Mr. Cracker. You're gonna do it. Because you have to survive in a capitalistic system instead of becoming a capital. So I mean we gotta we gotta be real with ourselves, yo. We do all, everything that we do is Afro is Afro European. All that we do. We have an Indo-European influence, man. So some of the things that we do, we have to realize that it's adding to our psychological issues. So that's what it is. You know, peace and love to the fam that are watching. You know what I'm saying? Kansu love y'all, man. Team Osiris fucks with y'all. This is a black flag movement. Team Osiris members, man. Anybody on Team Osiris that want to drop a few, you know, a couple of pennies of knowledge, man, with the cast that's listening in before we shut down. Anybody want to oh. speak on it, man? Speak oh. your speak. <laughs> speak your speech, nigga. Oh, man, you know what, man? I ain't really got much to say, man. As always, man, it's just great to hear the brothers feel, man. I'm glad we kind of back at it, man. You know what I'm saying? Get this thing back full swing and motion. You know, uh, yeah. I, I just love the feel. You know, it's some, it's some good conversation to be had here. And, you know, sometimes people going to be mad about some of the things you got to say. But it is what it is. You know, you got to learn how to separate your emotions from what's real. Real you know, talk. You're not going to like everything you hear. You're not going to like everything you feel. But at the end of the day, if you're a true person and you're true to yourself, then you understand that part about life. Because mm -hmm. it's not just a scholarship, but that's life in general. It's mm -hmm. a lot of things you don't come across that you don't agree with. And you're going to have to just deal with it. And that's mm -hmm. just what it's going to be. That's life. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is what it is, you know, so as always, you know, Black Flag Movement, Team Osiris, keep it moving, I, you know what I'm saying, we love, we love all our people and we love to keep this thing going, man, I'm out. Yes, sir, man, much appreciated, Hero, man, that's my man, 100 Grand, Team Osiris team, you know what I'm saying, the dopest research team in the land, if you, if you, if you feel like we not. We can engage in psychological battle whenever you're ready. Academia, we can't be touched. Really. We, we set the standard with a lot of this shit that's popping off. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. It's all good, though. We humble. Trizzy Triz, man. What's the word, Mockingbird? Yeah, yeah, I agree with all that you and that brother Avery just said, man. Uh, we just need to stop being scared. Don't be scared of success. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, mm -hmm. you, you're going to be persecuted still. As you're successful, but guess what? You're going to be able to make some moves that you couldn't make before. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? When you're just stomping your feet and being mad and whatnot. So go ahead and just, you know, be about it. Use your talents. You know, everybody has talent. You know, you hear that all the time. Everybody got a talent. You know, you do. Yeah. You can make uh, a way with your talent. You know exactly. You know be humble. Know, know that you're not going to know everything. You don't have to agree with everything that every uh, personality say. You know, these famous people and whatnot. <clears throat> just stay in your lane and do what you do. Exactly. Don't let them knock you off course. Don't let them knock you off course. They're going to say a bunch of shit. Um, stay, stay your course. Yes, man. The next uh, broadcast, we're going to be talking about relationships, man. And I know that's going to be kind of weird coming from Team Osiris. But, you know, we're delving into other, you know, fields of study within our black paradigm that's important to our people. And relationships between men and women is very important, man. This is one of the leading factors to why we are systematically oppressed and we have no progression or constructivity as black people is relationship between the black woman and the black man and their children. That is very important. It's our holy trinity. So we're going to address some issues, man, about like even with the, the single quote unquote black men and women out there, man, how to start loving yourself, man. Taking yourself out, out on dates, treating yourself to shit, being a happier person, man, so you can be a benefit to somebody. Don't nobody want to date no angry motherfucker, man. Mad and shit, evil and shit. 
Every the world is fucked up. Yeah, all right. but your ass still waking up in it. If you don't like the world, then you don't kill yourself. Jump off the nearest bridge, then nigga. Don't nobody want to hear that. Wake up, the world ain't shits every day. <laughs> let's get let's be one hundred. You know what I'm saying? It's very important that we have healthy relationships and we support each other to the fullest, man. And all our imperfections, we're perfect. So I would suggest in between, get a copy, man, of Dr. Francis Quest Welkin Welsing. It's an old book, but it deals in psychology, which is not really a primary field of study. And that is the ISIS papers. So a lot of her stuff doesn't really become dated. When you're dealing in primary information, you got to stay updated. But a lot of her stuff is still relevant today when we talk about psychology and psychiatry for the psychological issues that we have. It's pretty current, man. It's actually kind of prophetic. And it's a really good read. It's a short read. And subject yourself to Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, man. Um, excellent, excellent book, man. Because um, we're going to start talking about black relationships. So... That being said, man, kick your feet up, watch the playoffs or some shit. Get yourself a cold one, whether that be a cold glass of water or maybe a brew or something. Do what you do, man. Make yourself happy, man. It's your one and only Kansu Sheshmi on Moon. It's been a Black Flag Movement presentation. On behalf of myself, Amir Kamara, a.k.a. Gyeci and Gozi, on behalf, uh, on behalf of the team members, the team Osiris, too many to name, bro. We, we, we do it. Um, we love y'all, man. And we'll holler at y'all soon, man. We're going to be back, man. So keep it 100, bro. We out.